what's going on dudes and dudettes so yes as you saw from there team usa did beat mexico i think it was sunday it's been a while since i can gather so much news for a video to even make a video so yes it was pretty fun I, at first i didn't really care who won obviously i have parents from multiple countries and i was born in the u.s so it really didn't matter it's just fun to see a rivalry game like that when it comes to two countries and it usually has some fireworks whether good or bad and it was a pretty awesome game it's great that team usa got the victory but i mean they are kind of celebrating a bit too much over something that isn't even the gold cup which is what i've always heard of more than this conquer cap smaller thing prior so and I don't, I don't even think they're even maybe in the in the olympics this year or i'm not 100 percent sure about that i know they're probably still trying to fight for a spot in the world cup next year or the year after so they definitely have to string up a couple wins i think they did get their next victory against costa rica like four to zero so that was cool to see as well but hopefully they can keep the momentum going christian Pulisic is doing very well a lot of crazy fans from both sides out there even though it's played in Colorado but yes luckily the rivalry can simmer down for a little bit till the next time then the Anaheim Ducks they had the NHL lottery recently and they were supposed to be projected I think top two overall pick because of how bad their record was but their third overall which still isn't bad it's higher than last season's lottery but just sucks it seems like they're always picking in the lottery and they either choose guys that don't play right away or not but kind of have no excuse now if you're picking a top three guy he should be able to play his first year and not be sent down to the minors right before so hopefully they pick a right guy or maybe trade it for another established guy in the league already then there is some news coming out that the college football playoff right now it's a four team like tournament thing at the end of the season the top four teams play but i've always thought they should progressively make it larger to six and maybe finally stop at eight at some point but of course now there's talks that it might just blow up to 12 teams which to me is a bit too much because now you kind of just allow these top 10 teams to kind of just play cupcake even more of a cupcake schedule and not get noticed because they already know they can maybe lose once or twice if they're really high up to start the season and still most likely make the playoff playoff so it's just weird i hope it doesn't go that high it will be interesting it will be easier for usc to make it obviously but i don't know i i kind of just don't like it it's kind of watered down in my opinion then ex duke player seth curry the better of the curry brothers dropped uh, 30 points i think the other day as well on sunday when they advanced to beat whoever they played i think it was washington at the time in the first round so congrats to him getting that nice point total for a guy who has been off and on this year then a servite wide receiver from southern california that i've really liked whenever i watch highlights i kind of watched his team more for the quarterback they talk about him a lot as being one of the next good guys not this season coming up but next year coming out of high school and i've noticed this his wide receiver because he's always throwing to him he's a tall lanky guy but he's very athletic does very good off the off of routes and can get open very easily and does some good stuff has some nice speed while he has the ball in his hands and i know i, I mess up his name but i believe it's to Tyroa McMillan I hope I'm saying that right but yeah he's a good four-star guy he had his unofficial visit I think it was last weekend to USC a lot of really talented guys came out to USC so I'm hoping USC can lend some of these guys within the next couple years but yeah they've been finally getting a lot of big names on campus finally which is pretty cool then yes the big news of all I forget when this happened but Yes, the Lakers ended up losing to the Suns in six games. I'm surprised it even went that far with the way they were playing those last couple games. But 
yeah, overall, it's just injuries. The injury bug this season finally caught up to the Lakers. And as you can tell, when you try to build your team around just two big mega stars and you're playing, paying them that much amount of money, you can kind of see where everything comes off the rails very quickly, especially when guys aren't hitting shots as they were a year ago in the bubble. And yeah, so the Lakers get bounced. I didn't like how Booker was talking a lot of smack, but I did hear that Schroeder was talking smack as well, which kind of leads me to the next point that, yeah, even Magic Johnson, the great Magic Johnson, ex-Laker, said that he doesn't even believe Dennis Schroeder is a real Laker just because of, by his play and, you know, he's always he was always asking for starter level point guard money. He didn't really play like that. And he turned down a couple of extensions that the Lakers offered him a bunch of money. And he just kept saying he still wants to try out free agency for the first time. So, I don't know. It's just he didn't really back up his play. Maybe they'll keep him because they kind of have his rights. But, I don't know. Maybe it's just to keep him to trade him later in the year. But, yeah, it wasn't a good experiment. I think he should be coming off the bench. But, I don't know if you pay a guy 20 plus million come off the bench it's gonna be kind of sucky but yeah because of all that you know of course you're gonna get uh news about other top <laughs> top stars coming to the lakers and fantasy trades that are always happening like of course you always hear damian lillard come to the lakers but even if the lakers were to give up two players and a first round pick the one first round pick they have this year uh, it's still not going to happen. I think you'd have to get another team or two involved to give Portland either more players that they like or more draft picks as well. And then that just means the Lakers have to give up more future stuff, which is going to end up hurting them in the long run, I believe. So I don't think you really make that trade. Let him go wherever he wants. There's other players out there that I think they can sign and have a good team around the Lakers, whether they decide to blow up the team or keep most of the key glue guys that I think they should. But of course, I'll do a free agency thing whenever this happens or if there's not that much news coming out, then I guess I'll just do it now, a couple months in advance to see who is gonna become a free agent. But I think the Lakers should get realistically instead of all these fantasy stuff that people are doing. And yeah, some miscellaneous news about LeBron, I guess he is changing his number from 23 to number six this season coming up um, I guess he couldn't do it last year because it would have cost a lot of money for the NBA change out all those jerseys he would have had to buy all of them but I guess he doesn't have to this year that's why he's doing it but I thought he was mainly doing it to give the number 23 to Davis but apparently Davis doesn't want it right away but maybe it's because of that thing he'd have to buy all his jerseys and stuff which is pretty crazy but yeah, we'll see what happens, but just a stupid number change, I guess. And then, yeah, Rob Palenka, the general manager of the Lakers, has been, is getting a lot of, uh, I guess, getting released off his leash because he's kind of been having to stay within a certain amount of money when it comes to building a team for the Lakers. But now, according to Jeannie Buss, the majority owner, she says she's willing to pay over the luxury tax, the extra money it is in case they need to sign a couple more guys or certain type of high caliber type of guys as well. So at least we're getting that. And I still can't believe the Lakers are paying Luol Deng, who hasn't been in the league the past couple years, but they stretch out his contract. And I think this season coming up, this off season is the last time they're gonna pay him. I think it's like four or five million. So they'll finally be able to get a player next 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 year or some, some, something crazy like that. It's just ridiculous how contracts work. But yeah, hopefully everything works out. It's the stuff we're dealing with. And uh, yeah, hopefully some more news comes out. Never know. Might see less videos like this, but we'll see. Thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.